Oh, hey guys, you caught me in the middle of having a haircut. I just wanted to tell you about my new YouTube channel. I kind of thought a lot of the political stuff, which I kind of put on here and I enjoy making, I thought maybe it would be best if we send it over to another channel called Quartorius Talk. If you're interested in hearing me talk about stuff, then you should go over there and subscribe because I'm sort of moving over there with the talky stuff. So uh, yeah, little off the top, please, if you don't mind. All right, thanks guys. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, how's it going? So, just a relatively casual video here today. For a long time I've been thinking about libertarian politics, okay, because it's not a very common idea in the UK. Um, most of our politics is um, kind of, I, I would say they're sort of centrist or maybe slightly socialist to be honest, but few people ever really consider libertarian ideas because to be honest in the UK the NHS is like a national religion and don't get me wrong, I've benefited personally from the NHS, and as has my family, and I think the NHS is great, but what if there was something better? Um, so, what is uh, libertarian politics? Well, it's basically a broad set of ideas that roughly revolve around the idea that we should have a lot of liberty, um, so that's personal freedom, people should be able to do mostly what they want to do, um, but it's more the economic side that interests me, so sort of libertarians and minarchists and um, even anarchists, a lot of them believe that we shouldn't really have a government or that the government should be much smaller and limited and you might think, well, government's great, isn't it? We get the NHS, we get the police, we get the army that, you know, protect us, we get the fire service, we get um, roads built, we get all these uh, great services that are all sort of centrally funded through taxation and why would anybody be against that? Well, that's a good question, but then I came across this graph, okay? Now, at the bottom here you've got the size of government, government spending as a percentage of GDP, and down here on this side you've got yearly GDP growth rate. And look, um, this is public spending and wealth creation, OECD countries from 1960 to 1996. Now, if the government is below 25% of, of um, the overall GDP spent, you get a really high growth rate of about 6.5%, right? As you can see in this graph. Now that is absolutely huge, okay? And it sort of seems like the bigger the government gets, the slower the growth rate gets. So if the government's spending 60% of the GDP, then the growth rate is um, really, well, it's not great, it's about what, 1.5 here, would you say? So this is per annum, <laughs> and isn't this interesting from a libertarian perspective? So it got me thinking, because compound interest is a funny thing, because let's say after the Second World War, if the UK government had, had, had um, shrunk back down to what it was pre-war levels um, and there was a 2% increase in growth, what would that look like today? So, I got a compound interest calculator, right, which will correctly um, calculate everything we want to know, even though it's not money. And look, by year um, 20, the economy would be about 50% bigger than it currently is. So, 148. So yeah, roughly 50%. So by year 40, with compound interest, it would be more than double what it would be if we'd have had the bigger state. So the economy would have doubled, more than doubled in that time. Now, obviously we're 70 years on from the Second World War. There's um, a three times increase in the size. There will be a 400% increase in the size of the economy today if the UK had enjoyed a 2% growth rate higher than what we had. Now <clears throat> honestly that is absolutely phenomenal. If the economy was four times bigger and wages were much much higher, which they would be, okay, um, <clears throat> especially if the whole world had adopted sort of libertarian small government principles, I think a four times increase in the size of the economy is phenomenal, it would kind of mean that most of these socialist policies like the NHS wouldn't be needed because most people, in fact everyone, would have so much more money in their pockets at the end of the day. Um, 
So, I, I mean, I think this is a real balancing act. And I just want to re reiterate, I'm in support of the NHS and I'm generally in support of most of the things that the government does. But I think the government should really adopt the principle that they need to keep tax rates as low as possible for everyone, but especially for small and medium sized enterprises, which are 95% of um, all the companies in the UK. That phenomenal growth rate, you know, imagine where we would be today how much more advanced because a lot of these companies put money into research and development right and it kind of pays back dividends now the government can also put money into research and development and they really really should because these things have um massive returns at the end of the day they really do if you look at the money that the americans put into the apollo project getting to the moon you know it's paid back immensely you know i mean it was a lot of this funding that actually helped us develop mobile phone technology it's really difficult isn't it because on the one hand you say well isn't the state great they give us health care and they give us all this other stuff and they have massive armies and they have nuclear weapons and they have all this other great stuff supposedly but um yeah imagine if we didn't have the state imagine how much richer we would all be you might say well won't all the money just go to the top? Well, no, because what would actually happen is the economy would grow, that's good, and that would actually create jobs because, look, if um a company grows, right, then it needs to employ additional people because it thinks, hey, look, we're making great profits. If we employ additional people, we'll make even more profits. But it won't be just one company doing this. It'll be every company um, imagine how many, like, massive corporations, like, how many more massive corporations we could have that employ, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, I mean, the, the growth rate would just be, you know, it would be phenomenal. You know, Europe wouldn't be a sort of um, slow growth, um, big state place. It would be, you know, really high growth, you know, it would be so much more prosperous. Um, and like I say, we wouldn't even need these socialist programs, like, because the whole economy would be so much bigger anyway, you know, we'd be so much richer. So here's the thing, okay, if there's an increased demand for jobs, then that means that the, um, wages of those jobs will go up because they're in higher demand, you know, the companies would need to pay more money to get the best people, and there will be more demand for people. And that means there'd be more sort of demand for education. And education would be a lot more profitable. Just the whole thing makes so much sense, you know. Um, one of the principles that you could have adopted is if companies need certain people to do certain jobs and you didn't have a massive state spending, then they would say to colleges and universities, look, we were going to sponsor your... Um, we're going to sort of give students scholarships to help them become engineers, for example, and maybe in return they could come and work for us for a year or something. There are so many sort of solutions which would enable poorer people to actually get ahead, which we're not, not doing because we just say, well, you know, we'll just give the students massive debts and then they can just do whatever they like. Anyway, that's basically the, um, that's basically what I wanted to talk about. So you enjoyed this video please subscribe i think i'm going to post this on my new channel because i haven't put that much work in i don't think i'll bother editing this but uh yeah like i say i'm not really a massive libertarian but i just think that the policies actually make a lot of sense so yeah thank you very much for listening and goodbye